have been a little bit remiss if I never introduced the people at the top table this morning, so I'll just smack myself on the hand for that. Um, my wife, Diane, who's the good-looking member of the family, and myself. Um, my father used to tell me that he was the best-looking man in the South Island, so when he passed away, that crown went to me. I filled the rest of the table up with people from the West Island. Uh, Mike was originally from the West Island. He's the Regional Director for South and Otago Region, Mike Bunt. <laughs> and over the other side, I've got Jimmy's parents. Now, I'm sure you can see the family resemblance. <laughs> but they look after, after Jimmy in Toowoomba. That's Pauline and Doug Gray. Give them a big hand. <laughs> and of course, Jimmy, who's going to be sharing with us. Um, I'm in charge of the finance for the convention, and I had to uh, go out and um, count the money, and so I missed part of Jimmy's, uh, what he was sharing yesterday morning, but I'm here for the whole show this morning, so praise the Lord, and I'm looking forward to what, uh, hearing what he's got to share with us. It's now my pleasure to uh, welcome Jimmy to come and share his testimony with us this morning. Jimmy. Well, good morning, everyone. I greet you all in Jesus' name, and I'm just so glad to here this morning and just had a wonderful night. I hope you all slept well and uh, just excited. I've been praying and talking to the Lord about just what aspects of my testimony, what I'm going to share today, what I'm, you know, just what aspects to concentrate on and what would most bless you. And uh, I believe I've heard from the Lord. And so, you know, I just want to read a scripture before uh, I go into the testimony and uh, and uh, this from Second Corinthians chapter twelve, and uh, from verse two it says, "I know a man in Christ who fourteen years ago, whether in the body, I do not know, or whether out of the body, I do not know. God knows. Such a one was caught up to the third heaven, and I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows." how he was caught up into paradise and had inexpressible words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such alone I will boast, yet of myself I will not boast except in my infirmities. For though I might desire to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will speak the truth. But I refrain lest anyone should think of me above what he sees me to be or hears from me. And so my testimony this morning is not really to change your perception of me or make you see me in a better way, but it's rather to make you see God as bigger than you've ever seen him. Uh, my desire is for you a perspective of God and how you see the Lord to change. My desire is for you to get closer to God and for your life, your spiritual life, to become alive and for you to walk, have a closer walk with God than ever before. And so uh, the purpose of sharing this testimony is to help you know a few things and to encourage your prayer life and to encourage uh, your, your continual walk with the Lord. Um, yesterday I finished off when I was 14 years old and I shared uh, from the time I got saved from the age of 11 to the time I was about 14 years old. And um, when I was 14 years old, I had an experience from the Lord. And uh, like Paulia says, I boast in my infirmities. And, and I have to admit that I, I'm, I, don't, I don't pray as much as I used to. You know, I do pray and I do spend time with the Lord, but not as much as I used to in those days. And, and in those days, I remember um, if I felt backslidden, if I spent four hours with the Lord a day. I, I used to pray six, seven, eight hours. One time I went 20 hours, and sometimes I wouldn't just pray all night till morning. Some would come up. I will be on my knees. But it wasn't tedious. It wasn't difficult. Because I believe when you're in the presence of God, the time almost doesn't exist. It's like Moses when he went up to the mountain and he was gone for 40 days. 
And uh, I'm sure if you told him when he came down that he'd been gone for 40 days, he wouldn't believe you. Because in the presence of God, time just doesn't exist. You're caught up in the glory and it's, it's so wonderful. And that's what used to happen. I used to get caught up in the presence of God and the glory of God. And I, I didn't realize where time had gone. Sometimes I would be very surprised when I would start hearing birds chirping outside. So, so you know, I wish, you know, and, and, I, and that's what I'm saying. I don't pray as much as I used to. But I remember in those days, I, um, I, uh, my sister, my younger sister was born again and I'd led her to Christ. And uh, there was this other young fella, um, God used him mightily in the prophetic gifts. And he was uh, only about 13 years old at the time. And, uh, and, and, and we were praying. We decided we we're going to have a time of prayer. We we're going to pray all night till morning. And we're going to wait on the Lord until uh, the Lord comes and speaks to us. And uh, and uh, and uh, and so, because the Lord has spoken to one of the the young fella, the the, the guy who's the prophetic guy, he'd spoken to him and and said to him that we're to wait on him and to fast and pray and and until you know something happens. And so, um, I was praying. We started praying about eight o'clock um, at night, and uh, I was just walking, pacing up and down, uh, praying and and just uh, talking to God. And about. I would say about 11 o'clock because I was walking up the, up the room. We were in the room and uh, uh, this room just outside our house, it was like uh, uh, this, the servants' quarters just outside. It was in the main house. And, and I would walk and I would pace up and down. I'm, I'm one of those kinds of people. I just can't pray standing still. And so I was pacing up and down, pacing up and down. And when I took a corner, when I reached the wall, turned around, I turned around to look and, and right there, I saw the Lord standing there, and he was wearing a white garment, uh, white, like white robes, and he had like a golden belt, and he had something over his head, like a shawl or something that covered half his head, over, that, that came down, and, and he had the biggest, warmest smile that you've ever seen that just lit up the heaven. And I saw him, and I stopped. And, uh, and, and uh, Tony, the, guy, the other young fella, saw him as well. And we both just froze there. And, and he said to me, I want to show you something. And, and before I knew what was going on, we lifted up. It was like, like Superman. We just flew off. Just, and that's why I was reading the scripture. I don't know whether this was in the body or in the, flesh, in the spirit. Or, but I think it was a vision, like an open vision. But um, um, when I came to, I was lying on the floor. I think the, the physical person was still on the ground. But the Lord took me and we flew through the air and we stopped. We stopped right at the cloud level. And when we stopped at the cloud level, I started looking around uh, the area where we lived around Nairobi and uh, that area, Westlands, where we used to live. And I looked around it, and it was, it was at night at that time. It was very dark. And I saw uh, uh, points of light, really bright white lights in different locations, really bright lights. And, um, and I asked the Lord, and this bright light looked like, uh, like spotlights that were shining into, into the sky. I don't know uh, if you've ever seen those big spotlights when they shine them in the sky. You can actually see the beam going right up into the sky. And, uh, and I looked at these lights. I was looking down, and I saw these really bright lights in different locations. And I say to the Lord, uh, why is it that some houses have got more lights than others? Because when you fly in an aeroplane, the whole city is lit up. But it wasn't lit up. It was very dark. But I saw, saw points of light here and here and here. But it was very dark everywhere else. And the Lord said to me, the reason why you see the point of light is because there's believers and there's Christians that live there. And these points of light looked like a, like a, like a dome. It was like a dome-shaped uh, light that would cover their homes. And the Lord said, whenever the light is there, not even the demons can come into the house. And God he said that my light protects them because the light shines in darkness and darkness cannot comprehend it. He said, when this light is shining, uh, the demons can can't even come in and the Lord protects the home and there's peace in the home. And then I looked and I saw some other places, some other homes. The light was shining and then it will go off and it was like blinking. The lights were blinking. And I say to the Lord, Lord, why is 
some of these lights, how comes it's blinking? It goes on and off, and on and off. And the Lord said to me, it is because the people in the house are fighting. The believers and the children of God there, they're gossiping and they're committing sin and they're not living righteous, holy lives for me. And because of that, they're creating an opportunity for the devil to come in. And I saw demons would come around these homes and they'll wait for the time the light will go dim and they will jump in and cause fights and quarrels in the home and break up the family and bring destruction and people begin to backslide and all sorts of, of mess was going on. And they would wait till the light would go down and they would jump in and, and when they would repent, they would jump out. But then they were not consistent in their walk with God. And then I remember I looked to the side and I saw one house and there was a lot of evil spirits around that house and they were looking up in the sky at Jesus and I standing in the clouds and they became very scared, terrified. They were looking and running around in, in terror. Uh, and and uh, the, I said, Lord, well, who's, who lives over there? And the Lord said to me, that's the house of a witch doctor. And uh, I saw demons all around that house. And um, I remember at that point, the Lord said, I want to show you something else. And, and so we kept on, we just went up real fast through this, the lights that were going from the earth to heaven. And, and uh, I don't know how we got there, but all of a sudden I was standing in a room. And uh, in this room, the Lord said, I want to speak to you about certain things. Now, if I was to share about everything, the Lord spoke to me when, when, when he took me up there. It will take me uh, quite a few hours to get through it. But I said, uh, I'm going to share just the main points that the Lord uh, I felt the Lord wanted us to hear this morning. He said to me, I want to speak to you about your ministry in the future. And, um, and uh, when he said that, he drew a curtain. There was like a whiteboard or something. And he pulled the curtain aside and there was a screen there. And uh, in the screen, I saw myself in the screen. And I saw myself as all grown up and I was preaching the gospel. He said to me, I'm calling you to preach the gospel. And I'm giving you two main gifts. He said, I'm giving you the gift of preaching. And he said, I'm going to anoint you to preach my word to the nations. And then he said, number two, I'm going to give you a healing ministry like never before. I'll give you a healing ministry that will be strong in these last days. But he said to me, the healing ministry will not begin immediately. He said, the preaching gift, you've received it now. But the healing ministry will not begin immediately. He said, in the future, when you step into your call, into your office, then the healing ministry will begin. And then I asked him, Lord, when is that time that this healing ministry to begin and then he just looked at the screen and I looked at the screen and I saw myself preaching in a crusade there's not a lot of people in the crusade but I saw myself call a lady out and she had uh, she had something on her leg like a brace and a really thick heel at the foot at her foot and she came up the stage and I laid hands on her and when I laid hands on her, I pulled my hands back real quick and I looked at my hands and and she went down under the power of the Holy Spirit but when she got up her foot was totally healed and she got up and started running around and praising the Lord and the scene changed and the Lord said that will be the first the first miracle that will mark the start of your healing ministry and then he said, be faithful with this anointing because many people he has called uh, to have this kind of anointing have become money-minded and have lost the, the anointing of God. He said, be faithful with this anointing. And then he said to me, I'm going to speak to you about something else. And then he started showing me, uh, I felt a lot of sadness coming from him. He was so sad. And the only way I can, I can explain his sadness is if you stood next to a uh, fire that was burning, or like, 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 like a furnace or something, you know how you can feel the heat radiating on you? I could feel his sadness was so strong uh, I, that I had to step away from him because I couldn't bear the sadness and he began to weep and I said to him Lord why are you weeping and he said it's because of the young people hallelujah he said it's because of the young people he said I tell my people to preach to this one and they do not obey me and then he showed me and I saw people falling into hell a lot of people falling into hell but only a few going to heaven and I saw the weeping and he said to me, I've wiped the tears of everyone in heaven, but I've not wiped my own tears away. He said, because of the, the wounds and the pain from the people that were dying. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
You know, I, I'm, I'm just trying to get through to this. Thank you, Jesus. And so the Lord said to me, I want you to go and preach to them and tell them that I've come to die for them. And, the, and I would come back even if it's just for the one to die for them. And I saw the Lord was so sad because of all the people that were dying and going to hell. But he was also so sad because his people were not obeying him. He said, I speak to this one to share the gospel with somebody and they don't want to obey me. I speak to that one to put, put this one in their heart and they don't obey me. And the Lord was very grieved, very grieved. And so I'd just like to encourage you, you know, don't worry if you get rejected. If you share the gospel with somebody and they don't want to hear what, the, what you have to say. You know, let me tell you, when you get to heaven, when you reach to heaven, the joy that will be in the heart of God will be greater than anything that you could ever go through here on earth when you share the gospel. It will be greater than any rejection that you could ever have here on the earth. While we were seeing this, the Lord said to me, I want you to see something. And, and all of a sudden, I, I heard bells ringing in heaven. And when I heard the bells ringing in heaven, I saw people wearing white garments. And they were shouting and praising God. And they were waving palm branches. And I saw little kids, they were waving palm branches. And I said, Lord, why are these people so happy? He said, because one soul has given their lives to Jesus in, on earth. And he said to me, there is great joy in heaven over one soul that comes to give the Lord, Lord you know, when, the one, when one soul give their heart to Jesus. And I saw these people, all of heaven stopped. They stopped doing whatever they were doing. And there was just pandemonium. They were praising God. They were waving palm branches and jumping. And little kids were jumping up and down. And they were very happy because just one person has come to, 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 to know the Lord. And, they, and Jesus said that the heartbeat of God is for souls. He said the heartbeat of the Father is for souls. And that's why he sent me to die for, for mankind. And so Jesus said to me, there's something else I want to share with you. He said to me, I want you to know one thing, that whenever you pray, whenever you pray, never be discouraged. He said, I want you to see something. And then he took me in the screen, he pulled the curtains back and I saw myself praying. A few months back, I was walking up and down and I was praying. I was saying, Jesus, I pray for the sick to be healed. I pray for the sick to be healed in the hospitals. And I started praying and I was praying and the Lord showed me in the vision, a vision of me praying. He took me back maybe must have been four or five months before when I was praying. The Spirit of God came upon me and I began to pray for the sick people. I had such a burden to pray for the sick people. And I was saying, God, would you heal the sick people? And you know, I prayed for about four or five or six hours for the sick people, but I cannot tell you whether they got healed or not. I cannot tell you whether my prayers made a difference or not. And so I never knew whether my prayers made any difference. But the Lord said, I want you to see something. And then he brought back and he replayed that time that I was praying. And in my time of prayer, I saw myself walking up and down and saying, Jesus, I pray for the little kids, the little babies in the hospital. I pray that you would heal them. And immediately I prayed that the Lord opened all of a sudden the scene changed and I saw the hospital. I saw a picture of the main Major, major hospital in, in Nairobi, the, the Kenyatta National Hospital is a public hospital. And I saw this hospital, I knew it was that hospital because I'd gone there to witness uh, uh, many times to the patients there. And, uh, and I saw the Lord walk into the children's world, the little babies in their little courts with their tubes in their noses. And I could still hear myself praying. He, he still had the, the, the audio of me praying, still playing. And I saw Jesus walking up and touching the little babies and touching them and as he touched them the power of God will come upon them and they would stop crying and, and he would begin to touch them and go from bed from little court to little court and touching the little kids and, and they would be healed and they would be touched and, and, and God will begin to, to, to make them uh, feel better. Now see Sam will be crying. I saw one little child that had severe burns on their body and I saw Jesus go and touch the little child and, and brand new skin came up and 
everything that I was saying in my prayer, I saw Jesus doing it. I said, God, I pray for those kids with, 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 with severe uh, diarrhea and tuberculosis and all this stuff. And whatever I was saying, I would see Jesus going and touching those particular kids as I was praying. And he said to me, I want you to keep on praying for the sick. He said, I want you to know that every time you pray for the sick, that I go and heal the sick. That I'm the one that goes and heals the, those who, who are in pain. I started praying for people in their physiotherapy who uh, have lost mobility and they're not able to move or walk or do, or do anything. And, and I say, dear Jesus, I pray for those who are, are paralyzed in the hospital. Heal them, Lord. And, and when I saw this, I saw this young man. He was g- trying to get up. He was trying to do some physiotherapy, holding two rails, trying to walk. And as he was trying to walk, his legs began to become strong and he started walking. I looked around and I saw somebody else. Uh, and it, and everything I was praying, I was seeing the miracles. The Lord was now showing me his perspective from heaven. I was seeing the miracles happening. I saw so many things happening and I saw so many people being healed. I saw one little child being wheeled in. I think that child must have been hit by a cow or something, but they were wheeling the child in through emergency room. That The doors went just flew open and I saw a bright light and as I was praying, I was saying, Lord, I pray for all the accident victims. I saw the light of Jesus coming through and touching that child and she was unconscious she opened her eyes and tried to sit up but the nurses told her to lie down but I know God totally healed her at that time I saw miracles happen everywhere and the Lord said to me I have called my people to walk by faith and not by sight but I'm showing you this so that you can know that your prayers do make a difference hallelujah And so I want to encourage you, don't feel discouraged whenever you pray for people in the hospital to be healed. Don't feel discouraged that you're not seeing any results and you don't know whether you're hitting or missing. Don't don't give up. The Lord said to pray for them that is going to heal them. I remember during that time, I became a bit ambitious and I began to pray for even the people who are dead in 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 the morgues in the hospital. And I remember the Lord said to me, no, I don't want you to pray for them because it's not their time. Hallelujah. In the vision, I saw the Lord say, he said, it's not their time. And, and so I kept on praying, kept on praying, and I saw that happen. Then the Lord said to me, I want you to see something else. The second thing he said, I want you to encourage my people that they need to be encouraged to pray for protection, to pray for protection. Again, the Lord took me back to a time when the Spirit of the Lord came upon me and I began to pray against road accidents because there was a time when there were so many road accidents in the city of Nairobi and so many people were dying and I felt a burden to pray and break the spirit of accidents. And, and I remember I prayed for a few hours and as I was praying that these road accidents will stop, all of a sudden I began to see in the vision, um, the, I saw two vehicles coming, driving towards each other. And it looked like they were going to have a head-on collusion. And all of a sudden, I saw a big angel appear right in the middle of the road. And when he appeared right in the middle of the road, I saw the vehicles come and miss each other. And they would have had a head-on collusion. I remember hearing myself praying again. And I was praying. I was saying, Lord, I come against accidents. And, And the Lord started showing me the results of the prayers that I was making. I saw another another incident. This man was riding his bicycle on the road. And as he was riding his bicycle, bicycle on the road there was a huge truck that was coming and this truck would have hit him but all of a sudden I saw a bright light appear on the front underneath the front tire and the back tire and lift the bike up in the air move it to the side and place the bike on the sidewalk and this guy sort of lost control and he stopped and he started looking around because he couldn't understand how he moved from here to there and the moment he got picked up and moved to the side of the road, uh, the big truck just rushed past that area where he was riding, cycling his bike, and he could have been hit and killed. And the Lord said to me, I want you to pray because when you pray, I, I prevent accidents from happening. I, hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. I want you to know that we have the protection of the Lord. Whenever we pray, when we pray, we can prevent accidents. We can prevent aircraft crashes. We can prevent boats from being sunk. We can prevent these sort of things because it is not the will of God. Amen? It is not the will of God. And so I saw things happening. I saw the Lord protecting different people and protecting uh, uh, different people on the street. And, and, and some, some were pedestrians and they were, they were nearly hit by vehicles. And, and God would just somehow 
keep the vehicles from hitting them. And the Lord said to me, I want you to pray for protection because when you pray for protection, I will send my angels to bring protection. I will give my angels charge over my people to protect them and to watch over them. The third thing the Lord said to me, he said to me, I want you to pray for the lost. He said, I want you to pray for the lost. And I realized that praying for the lost is something that we have forgotten and we no longer do as much. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 2, I believe verse 8, it says, Ask of me and I shall give you the heathen for your inheritance. I shall give you the nations for your inheritance. He said, Ask of me, ask of me. God is, us, is waiting for us to ask for the nations. He's waiting for us to ask that the lost will be saved. And I remember that time I was praying and the Lord said to him, uh, showed me another instance when I was praying for people to be born again. And I was saying, Lord Jesus, I pray right now that people will be born again, that people will come to know you as Savior. And as I was praying this and I was coming against the things that take people away from God, I was coming against alcohol and alcohol and, 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 and all this sort of stuff. And, and as I was praying, I saw uh, like, a, like a ripple, like you, if you threw a rock into a pond, the, how the ripple effect happens. I saw the power of God like a bright light moving out like a ripple in, in a pond. And as this power of God was going, I saw some people sitting in a pub, depressed. He saw this man sitting in a pub, depressed, and he had a big mag of alcohol on, on, the de on, on the table. And I saw the light come, and when the light passed through him, all of a sudden he looked up, and he said to himself, what, what am I doing here? He got up, didn't even finish his beer, and walked out of the pub, and he went back to his family. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. As I was praying, I said, I kept on praying and I said, Lord Jesus, I come again because in Africa, maybe you don't have it in, in Australia. They've got what they call illegal, illegal uh, brew dens where they, 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 they brew illegal brew and they put some pretty potent stuff, you know, jet fuel and other stuff in there <laughs> that, that some people lose their sight after drinking that stuff. A lot of ethanol and all this illegal brew they make. And I remember there were, I, in a vision I was praying and, uh, and there was these people in, uh, doing some illegal brews and they had a big pot and three big rocks and there was fire and they were brewing this stuff. And uh, the light came into that little uh, dingy joint and, and went through it. And when it went through it, one of the rocks moved and the whole thing tipped over and just spilled on the ground. And the Lord just done it. That was a lot. Some of these things you see, you wonder, you know, it maybe it was an accident or something happened. But this was the Lord that did it. He spilled all that illegal brew on the ground. And I saw these people being touched by the Lord in that place and coming to their senses. I saw a man that was totally drunk. He was walking up a street. Totally drunk, couldn't walk straight. And uh, on the opposite direction, I saw a Christian, a believer, and he was carrying his Bible, and he was walking in the opposite direction. And I was praying, I was saying, Lord Jesus, I pray that these people will be saved, that souls will be saved. I pray that souls will be saved. I pray that souls will be saved. And as I was praying for souls to be saved, I saw this Christian walk past this drunkard. And, and just walked past him, didn't say a word to him, just kept on walking, minding his own business. And then all of a sudden, I saw the light of Jesus come and touch this believer in the heart. And all of a sudden, he stopped. And he looked right behind and he saw the drunk walking. And he turned around and he walked after the drunkard. And he reached, to, reached him and he put his hand on his shoulder. And he said to him, I want to tell you about the love of God, that Jesus loves you. And this drunk guy started weeping and crying. And he said, how can I receive Jesus? And he led him to Christ. Now this man doesn't know that it was because of some guy, it's some young fella in his room praying that that soul was able to be saved. The Lord actually put the burden in that Christian's heart to go and talk to that guy that was drunk walking home. Because somebody prayed, somebody somewhere prayed for the salvation of souls. And I saw the Lord doing this. And, and I, saw, I saw people in the street. I saw this light of Jesus moving throughout the city like a ripple event, like a ripple. And every time this light will go through somebody, if they were demon possessed, I, I would see it will go through the person. But the demons will come out on the other side. They will start running off and, and they will see the light, the, the light coming and they will 
would jump out of the person they were in and they would run off. And when they were, whenever they would jump off these people, they would come to their senses and they would be able to hear the gospel and begin to turn to the Lord. And I started seeing these sort of things happening. And the Lord said to me, I want to encourage you that you should pray for the sick. I want to encourage you that you should pray for protection. And I want to encourage you that you should pray for the lost. And he said to me very clearly, repeatedly, I have called my people to walk by faith and not by sight. He said, I want you to tell my people to pray. Even if they don't think there's anything happening, even if they don't think there's any results, tell them that when they pray, they will shall see the results in heaven. When they get to heaven, they will meet people who will come and shake their hands and say, that day when you prayed, I gave my life to Jesus. And you would say, when did we pray? Or when did we do this? But I want you to know there is a reward for every time you seek the face of God. Whenever you pray for protection, whenever you do any of that sort of thing, God is saying there is a reward and God will reward you in heaven. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord said to me, I want you to know something else. He said to me, Satan has tried to kill you many times. And it was very true. I had, uh, had so many near misses, I, and I cannot explain how, how it had all happened. And I said to the Lord, when did these things, when did Satan try to kill me? And the Lord showed me a few instances. There was a few times I nearly got hit by cars that I never saw. There was one time uh, this bus lost control, brakes failed and and and, and um, I was walking and as, you know how when you walk you kind of wave your arms and I was holding a briefcase with my Bible. I was just come back from preaching in a, in a revival and I was just walking and at a T-junction the bus was coming this way and I was walking like like along this way and, and there was a T-junction. So the bus would have turned to go that way or turned to go that way. And I was over here. And when he hit the brakes, the brakes didn't, uh, didn't, didn't, didn't work and he just kept coming straight. And he hit my, my suitcase. That's how close it was. He just went and, and there was a little cafeteria there and everybody bolted different directions and the bus went in the cafeteria. But I remember that day thinking to myself, the Lord protected me from that. I could have been hit by that bus and I could have died. But in that vision, the Lord said to me that it was because, because the enemy was trying to take me out because of preaching the gospel. And when he, showed, when I, when he said that to me, I became, became afraid. I, I started, I got a bit paranoid in, in that time because I was not concerned because, you know, the devil put a hit on me and I don't know if I go back, what's going to happen. But the Lord said to me, I have given you three angels. He said, I've given you three angels, one on your left, one on your right, and one behind you. And not only that, he said to me, but I've given all my children angels to protect them. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, from the time they are born, they are angels when they are conceived in their mother's womb. Angels line up before the Father in heaven and they petition the Father to be allowed to come and be your guardian angel. And it tells only the angels that have the highest honor in heaven that are allowed to come and be your guardian angel on the earth. And so I looked down and I saw Christians and they were walking and they were walking and they had angels everywhere around them. They had angels protecting them. And the Lord said to me that the love of God is so great that we cannot even begin to understand because the Lord protects even the unbelievers. Because when I saw the sinners who did not know the Lord, I saw the angels protecting them still. And the Lord, and I thought to myself, Lord, these people blaspheme you. They, they call your names. They insult you. They do all this sort of thing. And you still protect them. And the Lord said to me that my love is unconditional. Amen. He said, my love is unconditional. Even them, I, I died for them and I will protect them. My desire, the Bible says that, he give, that, that the angels are ministering spirits sent to ministers to the heirs of salvation. Heirs of salvation. That means they have not yet been born again. They haven't inherited the salvation yet. They haven't given their lives to Jesus yet. They're just heirs of salvation. And he said that, this, that, that these angels have been sent to minister to them. And I saw angels working, working, trying to help these people come, come to know the Lord. All from the time they were children to the time that, that, that they're grown up, God, I saw angels working and making easy and, and, and removing all the problems trying to make them get to a place where they will give their lives to Jesus. 
and 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 I say to Jesus, thank you, Lord, for sending the angels. And you know, I just want to share testimony with you that that you know this is true because when I when I was in Kenya and I'm watching my time here, when I was in Kenya, I remember I was preaching in a crusade, and in this crusade where I was preaching, there was a, a man that came forward and and he gave his life to Jesus, and and some of you may have heard this testimony from 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 Australia even a convention, but bear with me. Um, he came and he gave his life to Jesus, and he had really red eyes. And, and uh, I was preaching in a crusade in Nairobi in a, in a marketplace. And, and so when he gave his life to Jesus, uh, he invited me to his house. And he said, would you come to my house and, and, and uh, just pray for me and pray for my house? And so I said, yeah, that's okay. So we organized a time when I will come to his house and pray for him. And so when I went to his house, um, he was he was he, he had a very funny personality. He would say to me, "Oh, Pastor, I'm so happy that you've come to visit me, and and I'm just so blessed." And then he would turn all of a sudden and you'll say, "What are you doing here? Who invited you? Uh, what do you want in my house?" And then you'll say, "Oh, I'm so glad that you came to visit me." And so I discerned immediately there was some something. Uh, a miss somewhere you know he had he had he had some he had some uh, uninvited guests on board eh? <laughs> he had some uninvited guests on board you know and i and i thought there was something i missed there and so when this personality in him came up and he, he said who do you think you are why, why did you come who invited you here i said who are you and he said i am i am uh he said i am um I am, uh, what was the name he used, Some, uh, Golia or something like that. And he said, this man belongs to us. He has made a covenant with us and he belongs to us. And this man was actually a, a full-fledged Satanist. He has sold his soul to the devil and, and, and used to be involved in human sacrifice and all that sort of thing. And he was a hit man. That's what he did for a living. He, he, he carried out hits and killed people. He got saved on a Monday and on Wednesday he was meant to, to he had this job, this contract. They were going to shoot this businesswoman and kill her. And so, but he gave his life to Christ on a Monday. And so, the day when I went to visit her, to, to visit him and to pray for him, was on the Wednesday, when the, the day that the contract was supposed to be taken uh, to be to, to be fulfilled. And so, on that particular day, he wasn't working by himself. There was two other hitmen that were going to work with him. And so, they had gone and they had gotten guns. Uh, they had some AK-47s and some pistols. And so, while we were praying for him on the ground, while we were praying for him, his mates came to collect him because his mates did not know he would become a Christian. So, they showed up in the house and they walked in. And they were all Satanists, by the way. And um, I was there praying for this guy and they walked in there and they found me and this there was this other pastor there and we were praying for him and trying to uh, cast out these demons out of him and uh, and these guys stood up there and they said what are you doing and uh, and uh, they began to intimidate us they took out their guns and uh, one of them went so we backed up and stood at the wall and uh, one of them got down on one knee and put his finger on the guy's head and started making some incantation or some saying some words i think they were trying to put the demons back into him and so they were saying these things and i could see what they were doing and i said and, and, and just something just came over me and i looked at these gangsters and i said to them in the name of jesus you cannot do what you're doing and he looked up at me and he said you know pretty much who do, you know like who do you think you are because he had a gun on him and so i said we are protected here we've got angels with us and by faith i said there's an angel standing here and there's an angel standing here i did not know whether there was an angel there or not and but i said by faith amen and the moment i said that he looked to my left and to my right and two angels appeared it became visible all of a sudden and these gangsters saw the angels and uh, i couldn't see them and the pastor couldn't see them but they th all three of them could see the angels and i said uh, immediately i saw the fright in their faces i said to the angels angels throw these guys out of the house and the angels of the lord grabbed these guys and threw them out of the house and they couldn't even shoot their guns they got thrown out of the house 
At that time, John just started manifesting demons. He was, became very strong. He couldn't be restrained. And so I said, because that's the name of the guy we were praying for. His name was Jones. And so I said to the angels, angels of the Lord, restrain him. And the angels grabbed him and they restrained his hands and they put him on a seat and they restrained his hands. And we prayed for him for about five, six hours, getting him totally delivered. And he kept on swearing and cursing at the angels and telling me to tell the angels to let him go. And he, he could not, he could not get off the, the seat. His hands was firmly on, on, on the armchair and he couldn't move at all until we finished. So I want just to encourage you with that testimony that you've got the angels of the Lord to protect you and you don't have to be afraid of anything. Amen. Amen. Those who are for you are greater than those who are against you. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Those who are for you are greater than those who are against you. And so I want to encourage you that the angels of the Lord, they have been given by God to us to watch over us. At that time, I, 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 while I was in heaven, I remember I prayed and I said to Jesus, Jesus, will I be able to, to see the angels uh, and will I be able to experience them? And the Lord said to me that my gift, the gift of discerning of spirits will begin to operate in your life. He said from this day onwards, the gift of discerning of spirits will begin to operate in your life. And he said you shall have supernatural perception in the spirit realm and you shall be able to see in the spirit realm. And from that time when I was 14 years old, to this day, whenever the Spirit of God is moving, sometimes I will see angels, sometimes I will see things. You know, I never speak about them because people sometimes think you're crazy. But, <laughs> but I've seen angels, I've seen angels, even in this room, sometimes I've seen angels. And, uh, and, and you know, even right now, there's angels in this room all over the place. And sometimes the Lord just allows me to open my eyes to see them. And it's just a blessing from the Lord. And it, it gives you assurance and, and you kind of know that, praise the Lord, they're here to do to do our work and to, to protect and, and, and just different things. And so I just want to encourage you that, to, to, that, you know, fulfill your call. Fulfill your ministry. The things that the Lord has given you to do, fulfill them. The Lord said to me in that visitation, he said to me, work while it is day, for night time is coming when no man will be able to work. He said to me that there will be dark times coming. And in the vision, I saw difficulties coming on the earth. And I could not see people. people it was difficult for people to, 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 to preach the gospel and to minister and, and to do the work of God. It was I saw Christians being persecuted and chained and thrown in jail. I saw many people giving their lives for Christ and dying. I saw many being stoned and being thrown in jail. And I saw it became very difficult in the future for the gospel of Jesus to be preached. And the Lord said that time is coming when we shall be able to prove ourselves before God. And the, and the Lord said there shall be a separation between the goats and the sheep. And the Lord said there will be no middle line. There's going to be clear. And he said darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But he said to me immediately after he showed me all the dark times and the difficulties that were coming. He said to me but I want you to rejoice because the, 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 as dark as it will be in the world and the things of this world. My glory shall arise in the church. And he said there is coming a time of unprecedented miracles, signs and wonders. And I saw legs growing out. I saw miracles. Like even in the Bible, you don't read about them. I saw people with legs who are no legs, amputees, legs growing out in services. I saw people without hands, hands growing out. I saw dead people being raised up in meetings. They would have coffins and caskets and they would bring them in and you would see them rising up from the dead. I saw the Lord doing, performing miracles. He said, in those days, I will be transporting people even supernaturally. It will be difficult because as believers, you'll be persecuted and it will be hard for you to travel and go to preach in other nations and some nations will blacklist you because you are a Christian and they know you are a preacher and a missionary and you are going there to preach but the Lord said I will transport people to those nations supernaturally to preach the gospel as he did with Stephen the evangelist he said those days are coming he said unprecedented miracles unprecedented glory shall be released in the church in these last days and then he said I want you to know that I am coming soon. I am coming soon. And when he said, I am coming soon, I said, Lord, I know that. And then he looked at me and he said, sooner than you think. I want to finish with that because of time. 
Uh, I got far more minutes to go, but if you are here today and you're saying, you know, you don't know the Lord, or maybe you want to commit and rededicate your life back to Christ, if something I've said has touched you and you're saying, God, I'm not the kind of person that I should be. If that is you, I just want you to raise up your hand. I know we are, we are a lot of believers here, but if there's anybody here, just let's all just bow our heads right now, and, and we're just going to pray. But if you're saying, you know, if it's okay if we can play something on the keyboard, that would be great, brother. Thank you. But if you're here and you're saying, you know, I just need to recommit my life to Jesus. I want to rededicate my life to God. You know, I'm not happy with the way I'm going. It feels like I'm going around in circles. And some of us here, you know, bound up in addictions and bound up in all sorts of things. And, and, uh, and we're not really walking with God or serving the Lord. You know, I'm not going to call you out here. We don't have time for that now. But the Lord can meet you right where you are. I want you to lift up your hand wherever you are and you're saying, I just need more of God. And I thank God for those hands, all those hands going up all over the place. Dear Jesus, dear Jesus, all these hands lifted up before you, they are reaching out to you. And they are saying we cannot do it by our own strength. We cannot do it by our own ability. Jesus, I ask you to reach down from heaven. I ask you to reach down from heaven. I ask you to touch and deliver and set free your people. Set them free from all sorts of bondage. Set them free so that they can be able to walk with you. Set them free so that they can be able to serve you. Set them free so that they can be able to praise you. Set them free so that they can be able to accomplish the work that you have called them to accomplish. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for all those here who are like Paul. Lord Jesus, who are blind, and I pray that your light will shine upon them and cause the scales to fall off their eyes now, that they will see you. They will see you, Jesus, as you are. Your word says that when we see you as you are, then we shall become like you. And Father, that is my desire. Not that they shall see me, but that they shall see you. They shall see you, Lord. Open their eyes. Open their eyes. I pray that you may forgive the sins of everybody here. Come into their hearts, Lord Jesus. Save their souls. Lord Jesus, wash them clean with your precious blood. We thank you, Lord. If you're not saved, just say, Jesus, come into my heart right now. I surrender all to you. By my own strength and my own ability, I cannot do it. But I ask you to come and save me. I ask you to come and change my life. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 957. Kept the time.